Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. It's wonderful to be with you today, my friend. And as I've told you many times, I love the way we can connect uh, different ways, but it's a real blessing. I had some real encouraging messages this morning when I got to the station. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really do believe that this is one of the most important programs on the air. It might not be the biggest one, but the issues that we deal with really need a big spotlight put on them. And uh, that's what this program is about today. I have a return guest. Her name is Carol Sewell. She established G2G, which is Generation to Generation. And she's kind of like Terry Kimple that we have in here once in a while. I think a watchdog, you know, a watchman on the wall, <laughs> a watchdog. But uh, to find out what's going on in our schools, do you know there's things that, that they won't tell the parents what's going on. And so... Um, unless you don't ever read anything, you would have to know that we have, quote, drag queens reading in our public libraries to little children, putting a lot of confusion in their minds about sexuality. And it's time that the righteous stand up and say, no more. And Carol has been at this a long time. I'm so glad she's back. And I want her to just catch us up, give us a whole lot of information. So she's going to be here, I'll be talking to her. And uh, something smells so good in this uh, room today, Italian noodles. We'll show it to you and I'll taste it, okay? Before I join Stephanie though, I want to again offer you Faith Goals by Dave Williams. Um, if you're a real regular viewer, you will remember uh, Reverend Williams. He wrote a very successful book on Bible prophecy, Faith Goals. Uh, most of you know what a goal is. I've heard it said that if you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. And I think this is a wonderful title uh, to have a goal and then really add your faith to it. So I'm offering you this for any amount of money. Um, just send it to us at Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. Or call 1-800-229-0059. Um, I think it's a good idea, any way you possibly can, to boost your faith. And this book will help you do it and give you some definite goals. So hope you'll take advantage of that. And, um, you know, on the last program, Stephanie was numb. Because she I'm had a root canal. Anymore. I'm just slightly sore. No. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been eating oatmeal for all day. <laughs> yeah, I thought, I thought at first she was on an oatmeal diet. I said, I'm on an oatmeal diet. She said, well, is that something new? And yeah. I'm like, no, it's because I can't chew yet. There have been so, so many crazy diets through the years. That, that is not one of that's them. That's not one of them. <laughs> no. This so you called it Italian noodles, but the fancy name, but the fancy name. is Venetian chicken with creamy pesto sauce, which oh. sounds so fancy, and you're mm -hmm. going to see how easy it is. Yes, and I love pesto. So I have, I, let me do, get these in here while you talk. Okay. I have chicken in here that we've already cooked, and I'm going to put some pepper. Yum. Mm -hmm. Bell pepper. Mmm. And some salt and pepper. Okay. And I'm just going to get this cooking up. This is like so, so easy, it's ridiculous. But you can tell ahead of time that it's got wonderful flavors. Yes, because pesto, which you can just buy in a jar, Mm -hmm. has so much flavor to it. And it, it does. I mean, you're just pouring it out of a jar, so mm -hmm. it's super simple. And mm -hmm. then you're adding half and half. So, oh, hello. Please still my soul. Yep, so we're just going to give this a minute just to saute down. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to add that. We're going to put some pasta on the plate, put this on the top, and put a little cheese. And, and the viewers are wanting to know how your remodeling is going along. She and her husband <sighs> remodeling yep. so some I've rooms. Been painted with, the floors are all done. Now, we've been painting. So last night I painted till 8.30. The night before I painted till 8. After it's all said and done, I'm not going to want to ever paint again. But no. I said that in 2007 when we painted last time. Mm -hmm. So it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. So we're getting there. My house still is turned upside down like a tornado. You're going to have it ready, it, though, for Christmas. She plans Christmas all year. Mm -hmm. so. I do. Okay, so pesto. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. the flavor in here is insane. Oops, sorry. And if you and want to make your own pesto, be my guest. Yes, but be our guest. I buy it in a jar myself. Yes. So we're just going to... Oh, my goodness. Oh, just the smell of that pesto mm -hmm. heating up. Mm-hmm. Mm. Smells so good. Well, I have guests coming in August, so I have a count... I mean, I've got a countdown. I've got to get this done for my guests come. 
So how many guests? Uh, three, my brother and his um, I wife I have and had a wonderful, wonderful week, but I'm broke because I took my daughter and her family out, mm -hmm. uh, and I think I've explained this. We celebrate all their birthdays one time. Great idea. I know. Well, yeah. I couldn't afford to take them out four times a year. Well, because they don't go to McDonald's, y'all. Well, this was they a pricey. This Catholic. was pricey. Then, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful surprise. My son calls up and said, uh, well, we can drop by. I say, I don't see him that much. He's a pastor in Montgomery, Alabama. She was beyond. It was like Christmas here. Yeah, it That's was. That's how excited she was. She kept. I kept hearing her down go down my hallway <laughs> and talking to everyone. Did my my kids coming? My child's <laughs> coming. My yeah. son is coming. Well. Anyway, we had a wonderful time with their spouses. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so this morning they're ready to leave, and I noticed in his car, his van yesterday, beautiful, really nice van. My kids have cars with bells and whistles on them. Yes. Mine doesn't. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but I noticed that the windshield needed a little help. So when they were leaving this morning, I stood out in my pajamas. I said, <laughs> wait a minute. And I grabbed the paper towels and the Windex and went out there. That's a mom for you right there. And I said, I know this will end up as a sermon illustration. <laughs> I know it will. He'll probably try to find a scripture. He probably to build took a, a secret picture of you yeah, in your yeah. pajamas. <laughs> they were laughing their heads off. That is but so you've got to have a funny. clean windshield. Mama knows. Yes. Mama knows. Okay, so put pasta on there. I love this angel hair. Oh, this smells so so good. Brooke, uh, our wonderful floor director, said she, she always uses the angel hair until she got married. Mm. And he likes the other kind. Yeah, I so. don't ever use angel hair. Is it because? No. Because it because with my dad's spaghetti, it just doesn't hold up to the sauce. Oh, well okay. Enough, you know. All right. I'm okay. Take a little bite of this. Yes. Got to get, get some the flavor. Mm -hmm. Did you put cheese yeah. on it? You did. Okay. But spaghetti always falls right off of your... Okay, careful. Mm -hmm. That is so good. I can smell it. That is so It's just one of the best good. things we've ever had mm. here. I'm going one to use that at home. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's pesto in half and half. I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you can tell everyone you made Venetian chicken with creamy pesto sauce, and you sound fancy. Yes, you do. <laughs> and we like to sound fancy. That's what we like to do. If you want this recipe, it's... Free. How many things? I don't know. I watched the Democrat debate last night. Everything's free. But our recipes really are free. They don't come out of your tax dollars. Information's coming up on your screen, and we'll be glad to get it out to you any way you choose. Stay with me. I want you to meet Carol Sewell if you haven't met her before. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Well, welcome back, Carol. Well, I thank you. love and admire you. You're a fighter. And how long have you been interested in really trying to find out what's going on in our schools? Uh, was <laughs> since 1979. Since and you I, noticed things then? Yes, yes. Really? Yeah, and I, I probably think, didn't. No, yeah. that's surprising to people, but um, at the time, in, in uh, 79, the early 80s, uh, when I think our daughter was in third grade. You are kidding me. No. She came home from school with her reading book, and it had stories in there that undermined parental authority. Mm -hmm. put ideas of rebellion into uh, the kids' minds and had one story in particular about a poltergeist that w one kid in the neighborhood, older kid, was tricking all these younger kids and told them, sneak out of your window tonight, come down to this place and you'll see this poltergeist. And, um, and then he was caught by an adult but there was no accountability at all for his behavior. And so did they think you were from another planet when you raised some questions? Yes, mm -hmm. the teacher didn't exactly get why I was concerned. <laughs> I went in and met with her and I said, da 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 da, and she just kind of looked at me with a blank look on her face and just didn't get it. Well, did you ever dream 
that it would come to what it is today? No, no, mm -mm. I did not. Um, just yesterday I saw where they'd taken down a veteran's uh, POW flag, replaced it with the rainbow flag. And uh, the way they're pushing, pushing, pushing the homosexual agenda in our schools, starting very, very young. And you're from Texas. I'm sure there are states that are much worse than Texas. Yes, there are. Yeah, we don't, we're, we're not in that as much. Mm -hmm. But I, I let people know, and I try to let mm -hmm. our elected officials know that maybe we don't have that here because many of them have their kids in public school because if you run for office, uh, you feel like you have to genuflect mm -hmm. for you know the teachers' unions and the teachers and you support teachers mm -hmm. and all of that. Uh, but yet they really have no understanding that it has nothing to do with teachers. It's the system. It's the educational system that's broken and not ha doesn't have anything well, to do with teachers. The educational system is in trouble. I know here there are teachers quitting right and left, right and left. Now, tell us about the books that you have written and put together, and you've had some of them printed now in Spanish? I'm working on that now. I'm breaking it up. So the first, first book that I wrote, which is The Foundation, and this book is uh, an easy read. It's easy to understand. Uh, teenagers can understand it. My uh, freshmen in, in high school, my grandsons, have had to read it for their government class. Uh, well, how did that happen? Well, they're homeschooled. Okay. <laughs> That's <laughs> how that happened. That'll do it. Yeah. yeah. Now, and, this, was, this is about the Founding Fathers. Yes. Well, it's how they thought. How mm -hmm. did the Founding Fathers think? If we don't understand how they were thinking about mm -hmm. things, then we, it's hard for us to understand why they did what they did in writing the Constitution mm -hmm. and setting up our system. So this explains all of that. And it's all about thinking because the, they had a biblical worldview. And we don't understand that today because... So did we. Yeah, we I did. mean, I did. But yeah. We've got great-grandchildren, but most, uh, the younger most, ones aren't getting it. Most Christians do not. Mm -hmm. uh, George Barna says it's, it's less than 9% of Christians actually have a biblical worldview because we're biblically ignorant. Right. Just like we're, we're ignorant of our Christian heritage and the history of the, the whole foundation of this nation. Uh, it's correct to say we are not a Christian nation, but our foundation was laid was. in biblical principles mm -hmm. from the Bible. Okay, so, let's get to these <clears throat> others. And this is a must read, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, how do you get these distributed? Well, um, what were they thinking mm -hmm. is distributed by Joyce Meyer Ministries. Oh, that's Dave, good. Yes, yes. Dave Meyer loves this book. God bless Joyce. And, yes. She has a great ministry. And so at every conference, he promotes this book. So mm -hmm. he, they're my distributor. Mm -hmm. I don't have a distributor. Mm -hmm. God has done it. So as a yeah. self-published author, I've got 6,000 mm -hmm. books that are out there. And I want to go over the rest of these. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, what I do with elected officials in mm -hmm. Texas, I, I wrote a Bible study that I do with their staff, and I give this study to the representatives and uh, for them to go through, but then I do it separately with their staff. That's worth the cover of the book right there. That speaks. Yes. They, are, you, they are gatekeepers for their representative. But well, we first, talk a lot about yeah. gatekeepers on this show. I'm sure you do. Yeah. Homekeepers, you, you know, we yeah. are gatekeepers. Yeah. We're all supposed to be. So this mm -hmm. teaches them the principles that uphold liberty that, they, that you need to have in order to be a good gatekeeper. It might be interesting to know how ignorant the teachers are on these subjects. Yes. Uh, we probably don't really want to know that. No, no, <laughs> so, not at all. But anyway, so this one, uh, this one is endorsed by Lance Wall now. He loves it because he's mm -hmm. all about the gates mm -hmm. of influence and the seven mountains and all that. Mm -hmm. So he, he thought mm -hmm. that was great. And one of our congressmen thought that this was an excellent book for people who want to run for office. So the person that wants to run for office and that would read this might uh, be something someone yes. to consider. Um, yeah. Now, how do you, you're, you're trying to work through the legislature? I do, um, I have a support ministry mm -hmm. for 
Christian uh, representatives mm -hmm. in the House side of the Texas legislature. I have a couple of those that I've worked with for two sessions that have now moved to the Senate. But uh, mainly, I, my focus is the House. And it's, Why is that? Uh, well, that, that's because that's kind of where the Lord showed me to start. Okay. He's starting the House. I had more relationships with elected mm -hmm. representatives that were Christians in the House mm -hmm. than I did in the Senate at that time. But that's growing. And uh, so I just, it's, it's a love thing. Mm -hmm. The Lord just impressed on my heart that the way we keep them is by uh, encouraging them always to know that they serve Him first because He is their first love. Right. And they don't want to get uh, perverted by the system. Mm -hmm. In other words, they don't want to wake up one day, look in the mirror and go, oh my God, what have I done? Well, and, too many uh, Christians are going the way of culture and that's the way of feeling and, and not offending anybody. Uh, we've really been sold a, a bill of goods. Now you got a couple others there? Want to oh, be sure? yes, I just did. Uh, this is a, a great little book for people who want to understand uh, government and how it works. Which probably and isn't taught the same way you and I learned it in school. No, and, uh, and then how the oversight works because today we have all these thousands of agencies mm -hmm. and bureaucracies and, and we wonder, well, who, who has oversight there? Mm -hmm. So this explains that. Mm -hmm. And then our individual rights because we have right. individual rights and uh, they are being usurped mm -hmm. by group rights exactly. and victimhood and mm -hmm. all of those things that the founders never intended. Mm -hmm. Our individual rights come first. Mm -hmm. And then my last one that I did is um, my kids belong to who? It's, right. That's great. <laughs> yeah. It's to understand, it, it, I start in the garden and just take the history of education. And so when, when God created Adam and Eve, then they were parents, his instruction was, you are responsible to teach your children. Yeah. So if you can't afford a private school, a Christian school, or to homeschool, mm -hmm. then uh, parents are supposed to be teaching these things Absolutely. to their children because they're not gonna get it in school. So this book is really to try to wake up Christian parents and let, and let them know that uh, if they are expecting whatever outcome they're expecting for their children, that they may be surprised may. in a pretty bad way when their kids come home from their first year of college and all of a sudden <laughs> they're talking crazy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they're going, wait a minute. Well, what happened? I, I didn't raise you this way. Well, but, I, I've yeah, read material didn't. recently, and I'm sorry I can't really pinpoint it, that, that your child doesn't belong to you. They and, don't. They belong to God first. And uh, then we had Hillary Clinton saying it takes a, a village, village to raise the child. No, it takes two parents, and the uh, best way is when God's involved. Uh, Deuteronomy says, you shall teach these things to your children. Is, and is when you walk along the way, when you rise up, when you sit down, that you, your, your family life should be one that absolutely puts a spotlight on God, His Word. And those kids are pretty hard to move when they uh, go leave home, mm -hmm. go to college or whatever they do. Do you really plant yeah. that in their heart? Right, and, and that's, that's the key. Mm -hmm because when they get to college, well, even it starts, it starts in high school. All the, the science that they get has the climate change and all these things and evolution and all of that, which will confuse anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, well, wait a minute. Genesis says God created, and then they're saying this, and, and how do you mesh these two together? Mm -hmm. I remember as a college student, I had these thoughts. And that's the whole purpose of uh, evolution and Darwin's yeah. theory was to confuse Christians mm -hmm. to plant that question that Satan puts put into Adam and Eve. Hath not God said? Right. Did God really say that? Mm -hmm. So uh, that was the whole purpose of it, and it's worked quite well. Well, Barna, he's our Christian statistician. Also, and other uh, studies have revealed that the millennials today the percentage is heartbreaking. They go away mm -hmm. to college, they don't go back to church. Right. So right. Uh, it's, 
time for Christians to really take a look at what's going on. I was, we had a conversation the other day. Uh, no, it was a guest I had and uh, talking about how the American church is pretty much in bad shape, pretty much. And it dawned on me that thousands are receiving the Lord in Iran and, and places like that that you would never guess. And I came up with one reason, persecution. All of these great countries who are um, having real revival have suffered great persecution. I. I don't think it's absolutely necessary. No. Because he said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn, turn from their wicked ways. The church needs to turn from her wicked ways. Then he'll hear from heaven and he will forgive their sin and heal their land and he'll heal the schools too. But yes. it's up to yes. the church. That's right. You know, education is inherently religious somebody's values are being taught. Right. And so pe we forget that. Mm -hmm. So when we, when we have this mm -hmm. next great awakening, which I believe is beginning mm -hmm. uh, already, that education is a part of it because it's, re it's inherently religious. And I believe that more and more parents are waking up to what's going on in the schools and are concerned. Um, uh, our daughter is a, um, she's the head of a co-op homeschool co-op, which is like being the headmaster of a little mm -hmm. small school. And they're seeing a huge increase in quite a people calling and wanting to Absolutely. know about what they're doing and how they're doing it because they're pulling their kids out of the schools. And that's one of my major concerns is right. we have to start very young with our children because they're starting younger and younger to co-opt our children and to mm -hmm. put confusion in them. So to inoculate them, we have got to constantly be praying over them, teach them the truth when they're very young. And children can come to know the Lord when they're four, four years old, three years old. It's time for the parents to find out what's going on in the schools. Now, I have someone very close to me who's a school teacher. And uh, he said, it's almost impossible to get a teacher-parent meeting. Hmm. The parents aren't yeah. coming. Yeah. So the, obviously they're not interested or they would be there. Uh, there was a city in Washington State, and Washington is known as a very liberal state. There was a city there where the parents really got angry with this LBGT, whatever it is, kind of curriculum they were trying to get in there. Parents stood up and they got it thrown out. Yeah, they did that in California with legislation that was being passed that was a very graphic extremely graphic sex edu comp comprehensive yes that's a big if word. they say comprehensive anything you go <laughs> oh no no Wait no no <laughs> we don't want that no and uh, so uh basically the parents protested and uh they got that one they stopped it they mm -hmm. were able to stop it i think it's i think we're in a time right now and for churches to realize this and all that's going to take the kids down, just, just lead them the wrong direction. It's, you know, they don't like the term, but it's time for parents to maybe get a little political because the lines are drawn. We've got righteous and we've got absolute, complete unrighteousness. That's true. That's true. And what, what we fail to understand because everyone, including the pastors, have been brainwashed to believe that everything is political. Yeah. It's when not, it's, it's not, it's moral. Mm -hmm. It's moral laws that are being broken, and they need to look at it more from a, a moral, biblical aspect mm -hmm. instead of political, and teach truth. If they would just teach the truth and the principles of how we're mm -hmm. to live, what God says, and that there is such a thing as sin, and, and, hell. and hell, and all those things, then, then it would be a lot clearer. It would be more, uh, as God is, mm -hmm. is very definite, black and white. Mm -hmm. And uh, today, the church has gone gray. It has, and it's, uh, it's a tragedy. It's a tragedy because the church is that one body that to get together and decide to live the holy route mm -hmm. would 
dramatically change things, I think, rather quickly. Yes. Um, you hate to hear old people like myself. I've got a bunch of great-grandchildren. Uh, but the Bible and prayer in, sc in public school was pretty common. It was. When we grew up, we would open the day and they would have a prayer over the loudspeaker and mm -hmm. uh, have a scripture they would read. And we didn't have shootings. Yeah. and That's right. You know, we didn't have those things. Of course, I, I a lot of that is attributed to drug the drugs. Mm -hmm. You know, when children are, when they don't want to deal with boys who will be boys, they want them to be like girls and be pliable mm -hmm. and moldable instead of boys, then they started drugging them. And everybody, yeah. now if you, everybody's diagnosed with something mm -hmm. so they can give the medication to keep everybody in a zombie uh, state. Yeah, well, one thing, they took recess away. And yes. uh, boys, boys need recess. They I do. think girls do too. But I think the whole point is, uh, Carol is a wonderful example of getting involved. That's, that's really what it's all about. We get more people involved, numbers speak. Numbers have a lot of power. They do. And uh, from my experience, uh, it, it takes time, you know, but you, you set aside, you ask the Lord, just pray, ask the Lord, what am I supposed to do mm -hmm. about this culture? Lord, I'm just one person, but what can I do? And then reorder your days mm -hmm. with that in mind. And if everybody did that, and everybody did a little something, it would be a big something. Would turn and the it ship would, around. Yes, it would. And that's what we need to do. And people don't seem to be willing to sacrifice. But if we lose this nation, mm -hmm. uh, then we're, we're, we're in big trouble. Mm -hmm. So your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren will have no future. And that's what we need to exactly do. God right. said... You are to teach your children and their children and their children. Yeah. Three generations well, we're responsible for. Mm -hmm. Well, you know you're welcome here anytime. Uh, we are out of time, but I love bringing people on like this who are really involved because they will trigger that, you know, that curiosity. What can I do? Pray your tribe will really, truly increase. And... God bless you. Please join me next time and remember, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.